oh, it must have been from New York. Chill out, you know. Chill grill. Um, you know, I, I notice that, you know, uh, w when we get a bunch of New York men in the country, uh, you know, Bambi and uh, the Bears, there's a little bit of uh, anarchy going on, you know. Just want to just wanna let you know that. But isn't it great that we could bond together? Iron sharpens iron. Guard is working. You know, you know. Sometimes we think that, oh, I got to get to the service, or the or because I got to get the messages, and that's that's part of the work. But guess what? Right in your your chalet, right in the door, telling me they're Christians, and saying, this is what Christianity is. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Wednesday night, 6 p.m., and that's it. I came to New York City, and I saw Christianity. I saw people walking out the gospel. I wasn't told the gospel. I was shown the gospel. And it was on a, on a mission trip doing urban ministry, what we do at Nicelum, where I, God didn't fix my problems. I was still handicapped. I was still adopted. I was still abused, but God changed my perspective. And I learned that my problems weren't really problems at all. They're a platform. And my platform has given me amazing opportunities. So I went back to my hometown, to my group home, and, you know, it was 100 kids there, and we all listened to hip-hop music, and... Uh, so I got on my MySpace account, and I started MySpacing all these Christian hip-hop artists, and, you know, I threw a couple of concerts when I was 16 years old and uh, made some good connections that way, started serving in uh, Christian hip-hop, uh, actually got on as a road manager for a Christian music label. And uh, I've hosted events with 10 kids, and I've hosted events with 21,000 people. Um, all because God changed my perspective. And, uh, thank you. So I'll just leave you guys with this. is um, God knows your past. He knows your current situation. But he also knows where you're going. And James chapter 1 says... Count up joy because you're going to go through it. But you don't know what you're going through right now. He's just preparing you for where you're going. And I've ministered, this, I mean, just, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a group from Buffalo, New York come in to Nysom, and I was uh, leading them over in Far Walker Way, Queens. And, um, you know, I, I noticed this kid in their group was handicapped. And, um, you know, he was kind of, not wanting to do anything and stuff like that because he was just, you know, timid and scared because of his uh, disability. And I walked over and said, hey, man, what's wrong with you? And he's like, I got cerebral palsy. And I'm like, well, I do too, you know. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, we sat there for like 20 minutes, man, and, um, you know, we were talking about the difficulties and, like, buttoning our shirts and tying our shoes and, you know, stuff like that. And he, the last day he was there, he came and just thanked me so much for that. And, um he added me on Facebook, and I pretty much talk to him pretty much every day. And just know that, you know, the, the stuff you go through are not problems. They're just growing pains of your testimony. And you have a platform now, and that platform is what God wants you to use, and that's how he wants you to reach people. So last thing I'll say is don't be the church that ran me away. Be the community of, of the Christ centered community that won me to Jesus. So, thank you very much. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's all stand, shall we? Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one 
a heart so dull. Lift your hand and sing it. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one that I adore. I adore. One more time, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. You are the one. Uh, our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. One more time. And Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. You are the one. Uh, our hearts adore. Our hearts adore. Hallelujah. We worship. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, we worship you. We love you, Lord, today. God, we thank you that you woke, up, you woke us up this morning. You set us upon a path. And, Lord, we declare today that our past does not define who we are. Our past does not define our destination. Lord, I pray that you not only waken us up bodily, but awaken us spiritually. Stir up the gift of God that's within us today. God, we don't want to be the same old, same old status quo. But God, we want to be that uncommon husband, that uncommon leader, that uncommon grandfather, that uncommon Christian worker for the cause of Christ. So Father, bless your word. Bless this day, bless the men we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. give it up for the Lord one more time. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me today to page 839. If somebody's in the house, if I, we could get some more. A good uh, Susquehanna River water here. That would be uh, appreciated. That's at Bayonne. Okay. There's always one in the crowd. Hallelujah. A few years ago, my minivan was sick, diseased. Um, I went to the mechanic, and they said that, uh, yeah, your AC is shot. You need a new uh, AC compressor. I was like, hallelujah. And so I, I called the, uh, a friend of mine. He has a place in Connecticut. He said, you know, you could get a very, very good one uh, up in uh, Yonkers. So um, I uh, got the information and uh, was trekking up through to Yonkers. Thank you, my brother. That's it. Appreciate it. And it's cold, a cup of cold water. Amen. In his name. And um, so it's very hot. I'm running the, my minivan. And uh, I put the address in. And uh, Siri was leading me to Yonkers. And so I was listening to Siri and had to go over the White Stone Bridge. Okay, thank you, Siri. And then I went up to the Cross Bronx Way, Br Cross Bronx Way, Cross Bronx Expressway. Thank you, Siri. And then uh, Siri says, okay, now go to the hut. Okay, so I'm on the Hutchinson River Parkway, and I'm going up there. I'm listening. Okay, Siri, thank you. Hallelujah. Got my radio, my Christian music on, and Siri. I mean, you know, it's a dynamic anointing, double, double anointing. 
And so then I hear Siri say, okay, take exit four. Okay, so I take exit four. I come around, and Siri says, okay, go one mile, take exit three. So I go around, one mile, take exit three. And then she says, okay, go around now and take exit four. And go around and take exit four. And then Siri says, go around and take exit three. Exit three. I said in the name of Jesus, I this thing is demon-possessed in the name of Jesus. Give me a break. The title of my message this morning is this. What is your GPS for your life? You see, some of us, we, we, we may be listening more to Siri than the Holy Spirit. And now, now they have, instead of these things, they have things for elderly people. That's, I'm getting a little up there. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm ready to cash in with AARP and, that, uh, you know, praise his name. Getting close. Not there yet. And uh, you know, really, you really know what age group you're in. Um, talking with one of our cooks at Nysum and that, you know, years ago we talked about the Mets or the Yankees. So thank God for the Yankees. Anyway, the Mets. <laughs> Uh, uh, the vacant seats of the Mets. Anyway, moving right along. Okay, okay. And uh, now, now at our age, we talk about, well, what pill did you take in the morning? Was it bread? Was it green? What, what do you take before you go to bed? What do you get? Oh, my Lord. What's our, Ginkoba? What's the milligram? And so on. So, so you really know your age group where you're in. You know what I mean? Helps to, helps to make sure you're in your lane. And um, so we have, to, we have to ask ourselves, where are we getting our frame of reference? And, and, and now, not only just on your cell phone, people that maybe have challenges and so on, they don't even, they, they, you can get these things. It's, go, it's by Google or other companies, and you just speak it. Uh, uh, where, where is the closest bank? And all of a sudden, you'll hear, you'll hear a little word. It's just a wonderful thing. You know, I'm married to a wonderful, wonderfully beautiful a wife, a PK, Darlene, and I have two beautiful daughters and a female dog. I couldn't even get a male dog, guys. I mean, <laughs> pray for me. You think you got issues, I got issues. My voice doesn't even count. But I am acknowledged when, oh, Dad, do you have a 20? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I have a few 20s in your household, and you will be affirmed. Isn't it beautiful? The question is, what is your navigation system? What are you using to navigate through life? You're a pastor. You're a leader. You're, you're, a, you're a business owner. Maybe you're a CEO. Maybe you're an assistant. You're a VP. You're an administrator. You're, a, you're an educator. You're a principal. You're a plumber. How, how, do we, how do we navigate through the journey of life? Do we go like this and say, it, it, oh, I'm just going to rely upon the Holy Ghost and do this? Wh wh whichever way the wind is going, oh, I guess that may, must be Jesus. No, that's not Jesus. That's called presumption. And so Jesus gives us the roadmap. I give you three principles this morning, and we find it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. And Jesus is speaking not to the crowds, he's speaking to his disciples. You know, I have, a, I have a statement that I use often about the difference between a disciple and a Christian. Every disciple is a Christian, but not every Christian is a disciple. We're going to get into that in just a moment, but... Three things that we look at in verse 28 in chapter 11. This is what Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest 
unto your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy. Like easy pass. Are you with me? And my burden is light. The question is, what is your GPS? Jesus is our GPS, amen? Three principles. The first thing is, the first principle of what, have your, what is your GPS is, Jesus says to his disciples, number one, it's the first one, he says, come, come. He said, come to me to be successful, to start a ministry, so, so that now I, I become a minister. Of, he said, no, don't come to me with preconditions. Just come to me the way you are. How about a wonderful testimony from our precious brother Kyle? Isn't, isn't God awesome? And we say, and the devil say, and we're going to come, we're coming to God. And the devil is right there, right next to us and says, if you come, you're going to fail. You're going to be a loser. You're not going to make it. I mean, to, just to be very transparent, I mean, just coming to this conference, I, I was humbled and honored and excited to be here. But, I mean, give me a break. I'm following Pastor Paul for 35 years. There's a level of expectation from you brothers, and you've been so kind and so on. It's not all woe is me. I'm just saying these are some of the things that maybe you go through, I go through. We're coming to God, and, and God taps us on the shoulder, and the enemy is saying, you're not, you're not good enough. You're not ministry material. Uh, you're a little bit inconsistent in your walk with God. You fell last week. I, I saw that you got angry at your wife uh, three months ago. And, and you're, you're having to deal with all this stuff. Maybe you're not even raised in the church. You come from a checkered background or a past. And the enemy is saying you're nothing. In fact, Revelation, the Bible says, the devil is an accuser of the brethren. He's not there to cheer you on. Especially the fact that we decide that, God, I just don't want to be, you know, like kumbaya moments and, and just sort of, you know, be there chilling out for Jesus. And we say, God, I want to, I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best uh, leader. I want to be the best pastor, the best deacon, the best elder. God, I want to be the best. I just don't want to go through the motions. And you come to the Lord, and now the enemy begins this barrage of attack. Uh, I remember we had this, uh, I, I hate to even uh, acknowledge this story, but it's a true fact. We had uh, this woman on staff uh, years ago at NYSEM, and, um, you know, she was, she was uh, uh, a Christian woman. She just wanted to move forward, and then she went online, and she got her minister's credential. So now she had, instead of, her name, she had an R-E-V period in front of her name. Sometimes that gets us into trouble. When you're insecure, you need big titles. But when you are secure in Jesus, it doesn't matter if they acknowledge you on Sunday morning or not. Jesus has written your name and my name in the true book, the Lamb's Book of Life. And so I came off the elevator, and I'm hearing this story as I go by, and, and, and this woman now who has an REV in front of her name, she's talking about another staff person who had some, some some faults, some failures, no doubt about it. But this brother loved Jesus. How many love Jesus? It's not because of our failures. It's because of his unconditional love. God is not a God. This is not a penal code system. He said, whosoever will, what let him, what come? And so I heard, and just it just sent chills up my spine because this woman now who had an REV in front of her name, and she said to this other staff person, God could never use so-and-so, this brother that had some, some uh, problems, some challenges. Don't we all have challenges? 
Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Otherwise, guys, if we're not honest with God, that's called ster sterile Christianity. It's sterile. It, 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 mean, it's, it, it doesn't relate to anything. For all sinners need to be saved by the grace of God. And uh, she said, no one, God could never use this person. And the other staff member said, well, why? And you know what she said? She says, God can't use damaged goods. I was like, are you kidding me? We're all damaged we're all damaged goods. We needed Jesus, and we still need Jesus going from glory to glory, developing, working, healing. Come unto me. We're broken. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're weary. You know what? God allows those things to happen to strip us down to ground zero so it's all of Jesus and nothing of Brother Peter, nothing of anything ministerial. Come to me. You know, the Bible tells us over there in Matthew 14, if you want to look at it quickly in verse 28 to 29, and there is Jesus and his disciples. And the Bible tells us in chapter 14 that they're in the boat. And Peter says in verse 28 and 29 of Matthew 14, you know the story. They're in the boat, the disciples, the dirty dozen. And the boat has started to rock and roll and so on. There's a storm and and uh, the, the fog starts to lift a little bit, and Peter says, oh, it, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And this is what, this is what the Peter said to the Lord, if it be you, Lord, would you bid me come? You see, we like the word come unto Jesus if it's familiar. We don't like to, we don't like to go to Jesus if it's uncharted territory. We like to go to Jesus if it's familiar. If everything's okay, if it, if it lines up with our quote-unquote theological concept of who God is. When, when we heard the call, my wife and I, to come to New York City and be urban missionaries, I have people in ministry in my family and my wife's family. They thought I was loco in la cabeza. I'm not speaking in tongues. That's Spanish, by the way, okay? <clears throat> Some of you were waiting for a prophetic utterance, okay? I'm just letting you know. The interpretation is it means I'm crazy in the head, okay? Yea, thus saith the Lord. Anyway, they thought I was a little bit crazy, but now they really knew I was off my rocker. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says in Isaiah 42 and verse 16, the Bible says, Isaiah said, And I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. And I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto thee and not forsake them. You see, we want to come to God, but we want preconditions. Is it going to be okay? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to be rich? Am I going to be famous? Is everything going to be okay? The Lord says, you come to me, and I'm going to take care of all the details. Just come, holy abandonment, unconditional to the Lord, and I'm going to take care of the rest. Are you with me? Revelation 22 and verse 17 said, The Spirit and the bride say, Come. I don't know about you today. I say, God, I come with my problems, with my past, with my pain, with my junk, with all my stuff. And I have news for you today. The devil will say, Just hold on to your habit. Hold on to your sin. Listen, he didn't come to medicate us. He said, I've come to set the captive free. 
He doesn't come to schmooze our sin or schmooze our habit. He said, why don't you come to me? Because guess what? When you come to me, I'm going to take the weariness and the labor and you trying to make it happen yourself. I'm going to release that by the power of my spirit. Imagine that precious, wonderful sister now. She feels very, very authoritative, spiritually authoritative, and now she has an R-E-V in front of her title, her name. Um, be careful of titles that you request or want. It's a story of a, a man who was preaching at a camp, and his name was Pastor Brown, and he came rushing in. He got in traffic, and and it was late, and so they said, we're just finishing up the worship. You have five minutes to get in. And they said, Here, here's your name tag, uh, Reverend Brown. He said, oh, oh, Reverend. He says, no, 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 I'm not. I'm more than a reverend. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet, and I'm an evangelist. Whoa, Jesus. Look out. He's got more titles than the Son of God. I'm going to stand over here so when the lightning strikes, I don't get wiped out. Are you kidding me or what? And so, and so, okay, okay, we'll change it, we'll change it. Just get into your session. So he comes back about an hour and 15 minutes later, all excited, you know, going into the next session, ready to get his tag. And, and, and he looks at it, and he's a little bit amazed. He's stunned. And, and they said, uh, uh, Pastor, is something wrong? He says, well, you know, you didn't really put my, my, my title down right. He says, uh, they said, oh, Pastor, we're so sorry. Your title was so long, it couldn't fit in our database for, for the name tags. So we decided to just put on there an abbreviation, Pastor Ape. A-P-E, Apostle, Prophet, Evangelist. So they had Pastor Ape ministering all weekend long. Be careful of the titles you request. You're killing me. Come on, you're killing me. What is your GPS? Come. Your wife says, honey... You know, could, could you could you could you paint the kitchen? And uh, maybe that's not your gifting, painting. Or, or she says, "We need the we need this thing painted." And you volunteer, says, "Honey, please, please stick with your day job. You're, you're in the transit. You know what I mean? You're NYPD. You don't know how to paint. You try to do plumbing, you know, and it's like, you know." Hurricane Sandy or Harvey just showed up in your little apartment. You're flooded out. People, you can't do nothing. Come unto Jesus. Number two, this is what it says. Not only come unto me, he says, and what? Verse 29, what does it say? And take my yoke upon you. So number one is to come to God. And why do we come to God? To become like God. To become more like Jesus. So we come to what? Become. Say it with me. Come to become. Now say it to your neighbor. Come to become. Now wake up your other neighbor in the name of Jesus. Now come to become. How? how? Don't clap now. You're taking my time. I hear the trap door. Mark has already gotten it going. He's oiling it up. Bless his heart. There's no grace and mercy after 12 noon. It's lunchtime. Hallelujah. How do I become God's man, God's husband, God's leader? The Bible tells us this is what Jesus said. He said, take, what does it say? My yoke upon you. Oh, I, I, I like, I, I want the pastor's yoke. My yoke is a little tattered. It's sort of plain. 
Oh, I like the, I, I want the pastor's yoke. You couldn't handle the pastor's yoke. I want Warren Buffett's yoke. Man, this man has got so much money. Oh, listen, if money was the issue, guess what? Jesus would have sent lottery tickets to all of us. In fact, I heard one man in a church, he took his offering envelope number and played that in the New York lottery, hoping that Jesus is going to show up. Guess what? It didn't happen. I want to ask you today, you see, we could decide, we could stay as a Christian, hallelujah, glory, adios, and, and go to a revival meeting and so on, but the yoke means that now I am being harnessed by the Holy Spirit for divine business, divine purpose. He's not interested in developing your charisma. God is interested in after of developing your character. Charisma is what the world or the church has to say about us, but character is what the angels are telling Jesus about his sons and his daughters. Take my yoke. I read these scriptures years ago, and, and I just felt like myself, as I was meditating, closed my eyes, and and I'm thinking about these verses, and, and it's like I went into Macy's. And I went into the yoke section. And I'm looking all around at the various yokes. And I said, Lord, that yoke looks pretty good right there. It's got some Bose speakers on it. So when I put that yoke on, and I'm in the trenches of New York, you know, Jesus on the inside. Working on the outside. Went to the enemy's camp. and Then I looked at another one. And that one not only had Bose speakers, but air conditioned. Oh, glory adios. Now I can listen to some praise music and have a happy dance and get AC at the same time. Then I looked over here and had everything that I just said, but also it had lights. Because at my age, you know, sometimes you need it at 2 in the morning. Are you with me? And, and, and the Lord said, you, you, that's not the yoke. That's your yoke. You're trying to manufacture God's yoke upon your life. And God says, you can't handle that yoke. In fact, that yoke will destroy you. But if you take my yoke, it's tailor-made. It's got your name. It's got your zip code. If you're Jamaican, it's got ginger beer anointing on it. If you're Puerto Rican, it's got rice and beans on it. If, it's got a, if you're Italian, it's got some Holy Ghost Italian gravy on it with pasta vazu. Are you with me today? We look at other people's yokes and say, oh, I want. you couldn't handle that yoke. Take his yoke upon you. It said, and what does that word yoke mean? It means that I become locked in to God's divine plan. And when he says, take my yoke upon you, guess what? And he says, and learn of me. What does that mean? It means we're in process. Every disciple is a Christian, but not every Christian is a disciple. Here's our brother, Kyle. When I hear that story, I say, God, I have no problems. When I'm out on the streets late at night with our food truck and our teams, and I see somebody in a cardboard condo, on Fifth Avenue and, 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 and hear this person's story, I say, God, forgive me, I repent, I, I have no problem. And, and, I, and sometimes I look at people and say, what, what is their problem? And God says, excuse me, what is your problem? 
You're the one with the problem. Not them. You're the one with the problem. Sizing people up, looking at them, and so on. And my wife and I carried a yoke. We couldn't have children. A yoke. You know what your wives are looking for? They're looking for men that are not just Christians, but are disciples that are willing to take the yoke upon their life and every storm and every struggle and every test. You're getting closer to God. You're going deeper. The character of Christ is being formed in your life, and your wife doesn't see a wimp. Your wife doesn't see a crybaby or a loser. Or your wife begins to see a mighty warrior, a man of God that is able to take the test that are before them. That's what they're looking for. I have a friend of mine in the audience tonight, today, and he was, we were going through last night and getting some food, and I said, how you doing? He said, you know, he says, I don't have GPS. My wife put the directions together, and I ended up in Kingston, New York, not here. Lord have mercy. Even it's stressful to get to the men's conference. Here is Jesus. Not on the notes. Here is Jesus. He's brought before Pilate and Herod. And what does the Bible say? Now, don't, don't answer that question. But it wasn't a, excuse me, it wasn't a New York City response. Sometimes uh, I see in churches and people are coming in and, and uh, they, they, some people sometimes, and I'm sure the pastors can relate and appreciate, they're coming in maybe even late and they want a front row seat. And they're pressing the ushers. What is your problem? Don't you love God? Aren't you compassionate? Excuse me, set your alarm clock an hour early. Hello. Hello. But what did Jesus say? The Bible says when all these attacks and all these false accusations are coming against him, what does the Bible say? He opened not his mouth. Well, Brother Peter, I come from New York. And you know what I mean? It's just the way it is. And we tell it like it is. Hello, brothers. I ask you today to exchange your attitude because when you have a right attitude, you will go in altitude. God will raise you up. He cannot bless mess. I've tried it. It don't work. You've got to lay that mess down. He will heal your mess, but he can't bless the mess. Anoint it in the name of Jesus. Anoint my anger. Anoint my attitude. Anoint my selfishness. Are you kidding me? That's not what the Lord does. And you're saying, Lord, what am I supposed to do? He said, why don't you embrace my yoke, my harness? I'm trying to harness something in your life so that now you become productive. You become successful. You become respectful. You become trustworthy. You become a warrior, a pillar in the house of the Lord and in the house of your family. I got a card one time from my older daughter, Christina. We adopted, as I said to you, a few years ago. Actually, it wasn't a few years. It was about... 17 years ago, it seemed like just yesterday, and, and uh, adoption was good, but as they got older, my one daughter, for her, everything is awesome, perfect, but for my older daughter, adoption means to her that something was wrong with her, that my birth parents dissed me, threw me under the bus. And now this anger and hurt and frustration starts to come to the surface and manifest to guess who? My wife and I. What do you do? Do you, do you get your, your Holy Ghost ballistic missiles out? Who do you think you are? Take that yoke. 
You say, Lord, I've never been this way before. I came to you. He said, yes, we're going to take the girls. Uh, you know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't take some sort of like a driving course ahead of time when you raise children. It, it's, it's on the job training. And I got this card recently from my daughter about a year ago after going through so many things. I mean, it was so difficult. She was kicked out of the school she was going to. It was so bad that we had to send her to boarding school. Just broke our hearts. Take the yoke. I'm dropping my daughter off. The one we adopted. The one that said, God, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. And say, God, what are you doing? He said, will you just take my yoke upon you? I'm going to bring you through. You're going to learn my grace is sufficient for you. You're going to make it to the other side. I said, Lord, I can't see the other side. He said, I'm going to be there, but I'm going to lead you and guide you. I'm going to be by your side to bring you to the other side. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Then she came home. God began to do a work, and while she was there, we got word that she had rededicated her life to Jesus. God is still healing. She sent me this Father's Day card, and she says, Dad, thank you because you didn't give up on me. You loved me with all of my pain. And I gave you such a hassle, but you kept loving me anyway. How does that? I can't do it myself. But brothers, as we begin to take his yoke, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to come through on the other side. It's said of a story that when a young person, a teenager dies and they donate their heart and you're an older person, and you get that younger person's heart. You may be 75 years of age, but guess what happens to you at 75? It says scientifically that you begin to take upon your personality, yourself, the personality of that 16-year-old. So where you feel it's over, now you become like the energizer bunny. There is no stopping. Listen, let God give you his heart tonight. Let God begin to transport a new heart. He said, I'll take the heart of stone out of you, and I will give you the heart of flesh. Write it down, this scripture in John chapter 1, one of my favorite scriptures, it says in John chapter 1, verses 11 through 12, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not, but as many as received Him. To them gave He power to become the sons of God. You want to become a son of God? You want to become a mighty warrior of God? Then embrace His yoke. Lord, you're coming to me this weekend, and if I receive your word, hallelujah, I'm going to learn in the process. Say it to your neighbor, I'm in process. And what a process. When I was in Nairobi, Kenya about two years ago, one of my brothers was with me, one of my leaders. We went to see the pastor and the bishop who assumed the responsibilities of the church that Pastor Paul Johansson had started. His name is Bishop Samwell. He's elderly. He's up on a veranda on the second floor. We came in. His servant there brought us up. Him and his wife, Mary, are sitting there. She brought tea. Africans love tea. Precious people, so humble. And so I'm sitting here, and Samwell's sitting there, and my brother Randy, he's got his, you know, he's the paparazzi. So he's going around, and he goes behind me where the speaker is, and he's got his cell. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something over there. And, and so Samuel says, Peter. I said, yes, Bishop. He says, take the spoon. I said, okay, the spoon that's in the little tray there for the tea. He says, take the spoon and go to Randy. I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, is this some African culture? You know what I mean? I've got to beat my leader into submission. I've always wanted to do it in America, but I couldn't get away with it. No, 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 no. 
It's all under the blood. Hallelujah. So he says, no, take, take, the, take the spoon. And there were beautiful, beautiful flowers just like this. They were just all praising the Lord. I mean, beautiful, tropical flowers, blooms, everything. I said, what do I do with a spoon? He says, I want you to take the spoon and go back and forth just gently on those flowers. So I took the spoon, just what I was asked to do, and went like this. And all of a sudden, the flowers that were just blooming, praising the Lord, God is alive, no weapon formed again, that's it. They're all just praising the Lord. I just went like this right across, and they all went like this. I said, that is amazing. I said, Bishop, what do you call that? He said, we call that flower the touch-me-not flower. Guys, some of us are like those flowers. Somebody touches you, what's the problem? Your wife looks at you the wrong way, what's your problem? You, gotta, what, what, you know what I mean? Don't you know I'm working 60 hours a week? I'm putting the, the, the food on the table. I bring the bacon home. You're supposed to fry it in the pan. What is the problem here? Don't you understand? Let me tell you something. When you take God's yoke upon your life and people and life and circumstances come along, you don't go and now become a recluse. You say, by the grace of God, it doesn't matter what I'm going to face, what I'm going to attack, what people have to say, whether it's in my home or outside the home, in the job, in the church. My GPS does not come from Sister Sari. It comes from the Savior. And maybe you've listened to Siri too long. It's starting time to listen to the Savior. It said the Chinese bamboo takes four years to develop its root system. But on the fifth year, it grows to be 80 feet tall. An elephant has a two-year pregnancy. Why? Because it's so big, it's carrying something unusual. It's so big, but it takes time. Not like puppy dogs. Puppy dogs, every 16 weeks, the female dog produces a litter. The problem is, lots of puppies, but the size is first and fast and too small. I have news for you today. If we're willing to take his yoke and learn as our brother John, is that yes, yes, your name? Oh, excuse me, Chris, like I said. Anyway, <laughs> something wrong with this microphone. And <laughs> Sorry, the spirit of New York came on me for a minute. <laughs> what held him for this past year? It's the yoke. I couldn't handle that yoke. I can only handle my own yoke. And we're saying, God, in the name, I don't like this yoke. Give me another yoke. And I got the yoke from God. The thing looked like early Salvation Army. I said, Lord, you're killing me. He says, that's the plan. I got 30 seconds before Brother Mark comes in. What is your GPS? Number one, what? Come to God. Why? To become. Number three is to overcome. Overcome. Say it with me. Overcome. How you got to overcome? The Bible tells us, it says in John 16, 33, Jesus said, in the world you have tribulation, but he said, have no fear, I have overcome the world. Revelation 12, 11, it says they overcame him, what? By the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. You can never have a good word of testimony until the blood has been applied to your life. Otherwise, I'm just going to give them a piece of my mind. And that's all we're going to give. And now we're going to have collateral damage. But if I just say, Lord, I know it's the precious blood of Jesus. The time has come. Why don't we stand right now as we have the afternoon together.
going to have lunch and break bread, be here back tonight. Maybe everybody needs right now just to take their cell phone in your hand. Everybody take your cell phone, put everything aside. Everybody stand. Don't text anybody. I just said get your phone out. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I want you to lift up this cell phone to the Lord. And say, God, today, I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer. Dear God, God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We exchange Siri to hear the Savior. You become my GPS. You will lead and guide me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. give it up for the Lord today. Amen. Okay, my brothers, you are dismissed. Have a wonderful afternoon and some great fellowship. God bless you.